the trends we're seeing with DDoS are quite varied. Two of the biggest ones we're seeing is the increase in attacks. When we look at some of the recent history, there's been the Mirai botnet last October, which went up to 1.2 terabits per second. This really changed the economics of DDoS protection because the previous solutions were too expensive to be able to mitigate at scale against these ever-increasing attacks. Also, the security teams have to deal with these, so being able to alleviate the stress and also make the job easier for security professionals, especially when they have multiple different products is essential. Having things such as automating uh, the defenses they can put in place, whether it's automating a report, automating packet captures, automating the mitigation, um, can really relieve the stress on the IT team. Then when attacks actually happen, the IT team uh, wants to be able to have someone they can call who's experienced in dealing with those specific types of attacks, because there's so many different types nowadays. So having someone to call is essential and one of the trends we're seeing. It's all about having the right policies in place. And some of these are technological, but some of them are also human and uh, process driven. All the companies out there should baseline what their network is today so they know what it is in peacetime. Because then when an event happens, they know they're in a war situation or a wartime situation and they can take appropriate countermeasures. So having policies that they can escalate through various different levels depending on how serious the potential attack is, is important. Then on the uh, human side, being able to know who to uh, communicate with when an attack happens. For example, if the website goes down, you should be notified. Is it the uh, marketing person? Is it the CEO, etc.? So having a policy which both detects and mitigates the attacks and then being able to be able to communicate effectively and know what to do can basically reduce the time and reduce the stress of a particular attack which is coming in. A10 is competitively differentiated with our solution. We're very, very well known for having very high levels of mitigation. If you look at our customer base, it has some of the largest, uh, most important networks in the world, from cloud computing providers to uh, managed service providers to some of the largest, absolutely largest gaming providers in the world. In Japan, we have three mobile telcos who use us, for example, for millions and millions of subscribers to protect their networks. So um, the mitigation uh, capacity is a huge differentiator because they have selected us because we can go up to 300 gigabits per second in a three rack unit box. So one appliance can do 300 gig, we can, gigs. We can also go up to 2.4 terabits in a linkless synchronization cluster. Uh, and also 440 million packets per second. So when compared to our competitors, that's you can get a lot more bang for your buck uh, versus uh, the other solutions and also at a lower cost. And as these attacks are increasing, that's increasingly essential. Now, that's just the mitigation side. We've also uh, introduced detection capabilities, and we can do approximately 2x uh, what our competitors can do, just even on our virtual machine, running on our A Galaxy management system. So we can do 500,000 uh, flows per second. We, and it's not just about the capacity, it's also being able to process that data and make intelligent decisions about that data. So with those 500,000 flows, for example, we can detect attacks once we receive the data within three seconds. Right? And then uh, automate protection procedures to put mitigation in, pl in place if someone's running in a reactive mode where they're just putting DDoS protection capacity in when they need it, which is a very cost-effective way of doing it. So basically, uh, speed and being able to respond very quickly is some of the things we, we are extremely good at. When we look at uh, what we advise customers to do, it's really to know what's going on in their environment. So baselining um, the environment to know uh, what their normal traffic patterns are. You can uh, get appliances, for example, a trial of an appliance or even download a VM and just monitor your environment to see what's going on. Now, once you monitor it, you also then want to have protection in place. So the stage two, uh, after monitoring, can be to put in mitigation policies. So you can automate your mitigation policies for it from there, we'll say zero to five, or maybe put in some um, SecOps rules so you can use our powerful API to uh, put in certain mitigations as you see fit or when certain events uh, happen. Also, the third piece is also to have um, you know, the communications procedures. So who are you gonna talk to uh, when, when an event happens? So as you escalate through those levels on the 
um, more on the product type side, on the mitigation side, you know, who would you have to inform when certain things happen? Or is it you only inform certain people when the website goes down, as an example, or do you let them know when you suspect something? So have a whole plan through baselining, having the capacity in place you know, for the peak attacks you anticipate to the communication plans when you're under attack because we've seen so many high profile organizations under attack, it's often only a matter of time. For more information, come to www.a10networks.com. Contact us and we'll be pleased to assist you um, with your protection policies and what you might need. We have offices around the world, so we'll see you soon.